Today on Applied Science, I'd like to talk about this interesting material that I recently learned about at Maker Fair. It's a paper that's coated with a special coating that swells up when you heat it. So you can make patterns on this paper and um, you can sort of feel them. So it's about a half a millimeter high. And um, the way that it's normally used is you print on it with a normal printer, either a laser printer or even an inkjet. And then you pass a very intense light over this and the black areas absorb more energy and uh, swells up. And so you have to sort of set the exposure almost as if you were taking a photograph. And uh, the application of this is so that blind folks can actually get a sense of a diagram or a picture. And so you can print this out on a normal printer. And like I say, then you can kind of raise it up so that it has this 3D feature to it. So I figured we'd uh, play with it a little bit. Um, I saw this at the University of Michigan's booth at Maker Faire, and uh, those folks are working on a pneumatic display, and this is sort of like a static uh, counterpart to it. So wouldn't it be great if you could actually pump up different sections of the paper with sort of a, a valve manifold, and that's what they're working on. But this at least gives a, um, a static way to see how it's going to be. Okay, so let's try one of these out. I ended up buying a pack of this paper. Unfortunately, it's kind of expensive. It's about a dollar a sheet and you have to buy it in you know, 100 sheet packs. So uh, if anyone knows of like a crowdsourcing or crowdfunding type site where uh, people can buy like small quantities and have it distributed, I actually don't have time to do the fulfillment myself of mailing this to each person, but I'm more than happy to donate the pack of paper that I bought since I have more than I need. So we'll try this out. And um, if you read the instructions online, they'll say, well, you need to use a special ink and it has to have carbon in it and this and that. But I've found that uh, you can use a plain old Sharpie, that works just fine. You can even use uh, a pencil, that's fine too. The only thing you have to worry about is that the coating is somewhat delicate. And so um, with a Sharpie, it's not really much of a problem. With a pencil, you know, you can actually see I'm kind of chipping off the, uh, the coating there and then that part won't work. So let me just do it a little bit more gently. Probably a soft lead pencil would be kind of a better thing in that case. And of course, this is not how the company recommends you use this. Uh, they want you to print on it with a laser jet or an inkjet printer. And like I say, that works just fine too. So what we're going to do, oh, also they sell a very expensive machine that consists of a tungsten light bulb and some rollers. And what it does is it rolls the paper uh, through the machine and so that each area gets a consistent exposure. So you can change the roller speed. And then as the thing goes through the machine, it all gets exposed to the same amount of infrared light. Uh, but I don't have that, but I do have this really, really powerful um, uh, light for a, uh, a film camera, a super eight millimeter film camera. And I actually burned a hole in my parents' carpet uh, with this many years ago. So they can attest that this puts out a massive amount of infrared light. It's actually uh, 650 watts. And uh, I had it face down and went over to plug it in. And by the time I got back, the carpet was melted. But anyway, let me just show you what this looks like. It's it's quite bright, and I found that um, the chemical reaction or the mechanical process that happens in this paper is kind of slow. So what you don't want to do, I actually had these, these retro welding goggles, and I was actually watching it happen as I was putting the light on the paper. You can see it swell. But this actually doesn't work that well because by the time it starts to swell, it's sort of too late. And what happens is you end up with a sort of an effect like this where it starts to swell up, and then it's sort of a positive feedback loop because as it swells up, now it has more surface area and it captures more energy and it ends up looking like cauliflower. So uh, what I found the best way to do this is to just pass the light over the paper and do it at a consistent speed and then check to see if it's, you know, if it's raised to high enough levels and if it doesn't work, just do it again. That way you sort of have the same dose and you can check how it's going. So let's, let's see how this goes. Okay, so with one pass, it looks like the pencil started to do this cauliflower thing. I don't know if you can see that, but the pencil is already raised up a little bit. And actually the Sharpie is too. Let me give it another pass. And yeah, that's, that's, I can feel it quite well. The pencil actually is absorbing a little bit more than the Sharpie. I'm going to go a little slower this time. And that's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually harder to see the raise effect uh, when, it's, when there's the, the black marker is on top. So I'm gonna talk about another way to do this in just a minute. Let me give this a little bit more heat. 
Okay, not bad. It's a pretty cool technique, right? I mean, you can just draw something on a piece of paper and then instantly turn it into a 3D shape. Pretty cool. So while playing with this, of course, I was thinking, geez, I wish I had a, a source of focused, you know, intense heat radiation that I could control with like an XY plotter. Well, of course, that's a laser cutter. And so I put this into an Epilogue 75 watt machine and first tested it out uh, at the focal plane of the machine as if I was just laser cutting some paper just to see if it would laser cut properly. And it does actually, it's, it's just fine. The edge is a little bit more funky than you would expect with um, sort of normal laser cut paper, but you can get good detail with it. Uh, it's really no problem at all. And I tried turning the power settings down as far as I could go and it's, the edge is still a little funky, even with the power basically as low as I can get it. But anyway, so then what I did is I lowered the bed in the laser cutter and uh, this will give us a very large laser spot so that when the sheet is very far away from the focal plane, uh, you end up with the laser kind of spread out over a larger area and that's, that's actually what causes the paper to swell up. So there's this kind of stored heat phenomenon where if you go over an area, even like within a few seconds with the laser cutter, um, it will burn the thing or it'll, you know, it'll expand to its highest height. And then as it continues over again, it just burns the area. So you kind of have to adjust your laser cutting routine to take this into account. But it's really cool. And another neat sort of, you know, byproduct of this whole system is that um, you can have a design that has both cut features and 3D raised features. And all you have to do is change the bed height so that the paper is low for the uh, 3D features. And then you just raise the bed back up to the focal plane and cut it out. So you can have features, 3D features that are perfectly registered uh, with your cut features. Pretty neat. Um, so I've been thinking about what you could actually do with this. Um, you know, of course, besides making diagrams for blind folks, which is already a pretty cool goal. And I was thinking, well, you know, it would be nice to um, make like a track for something, either a marble or a liquid or something else. And you could potentially make, you know, if this were on incline, you could sort of, uh, I was even thinking along the lines of like, did you comp? Like it's basically a physical computer where the, the marbles and stuff go around these tracks. As you can see, it doesn't really, doesn't really work quite that well. The bump height is about half a millimeter. So with a marble this size, it doesn't really want to track that well, but it's, it's okay. And like I say, I didn't dial in the parameters super carefully uh, with the, um, the laser cutter. Um, it's amazingly chemical resistant. So I did a little bit of testing with uh, different solvents to see if the paper would hold up and it's actually quite strong. Um, the methylene chloride or dichloromethane will dissolve it, but almost nothing else will. And so um, you could actually use it as sort of like a mixing plate, like you could make custom uh, wells or something with connections between them. And I was thinking, you know, ideally you could incline this and pour your liquids on the top and it would sort of trickle down through the plate sort of like that. Um, it has almost the same problem that 3D printers have where that sort of a routine is great, but it only is useful if you're going to customize the mixing plate. So for example, if your project was to make this liquid handler, you would just injection mold this or stamp it or something. It would be much higher quality and easier to produce. Uh, but if you needed the customization angle, then of course you could use this uh, and, and print one out, literally print it out and then just, you know, raise it up with your 650 watt light. Um, so, okay, if you have an idea for this that you want me to try out, put that in the comments. And also if we figure out a way to uh, distribute this to folks so that they can play with it, let me know. That doesn't involve me filling envelopes. Okay, see you next time. Bye.